Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados. And of course, we are at the beautiful Santosha in St. Andrew. And with me is Jackie Pinder, and she's from the Community Development Department. How are you, Jackie? I am good this morning. Good morning to one and all. Fantastic. And we're going to have some samples for you. Chef Tosh is going to get busy with the cooking, so you're going to experience a real breakfast in Barbados. Oh. But tell me all about the Community Development Department and what you do. The Community Development Department is a social work agency, and we offer a number of courses to the Barbadian public, and sometimes majority of these courses are free of cost. For example, we have the Community Technology Program, mm -hmm. and with the Community Technology Program, we offer basic information technology. This course costs about 3000 but at the de Development Department, this course is free, and it's ah. open to all ages from 16 plus. So you could be 60, you could be 80, and you're interested in computer classes, the Community Development Department is the place for you to sign up. So why are you offering that class? Because it's something that was mandated by the government of Barbados. Okay. Yeah, right. So your aim is basically to get everyone, if possible, to be computer literate. Correct. That okay. is the aim. So we offer, we have for the adults, we have computer repairs. We also have a community arts program. And when they say the community arts program, you learn to do drawing and illustration, airbrushing, and computer graphics. And then recently, we had the community technology it's for teens program, mm -hmm. the it's for teens summer program. And this is sponsored by Flo. And the graduation was only this Friday at the Sherman Conference Center. We have mm -hmm. over 300 children um, wow, graduated. Yes. And the ages were from 11 to, to 16. Okay. And the children learn computer graphics, drawing and illustration, and a, a number of other um, applications related to really how to do business cards, flyers, the whole works. Oh, nice. And that was free of cost. Free, free, free. And it was a six weeks program. Wow. That sounds really, really good. <laughs> now, when you said earlier, I thought about the older folk. What has been... The, what has the response been like for older people? Because you know some people think, eh, I can't learn at this point. So you have that person who's probably in their 50s and didn't do a lot of computer stuff. What's the response like with the older the response, The older persons, the response has been great. Mm -hmm. It is the younger ones that we, we are not seeing coming to the program. Wow. Yes, for example, we find that we're getting the, the mature folks for our basic computering and our advanced, but it's the younger ones that we are really not capturing. So we are trying to see if we could encourage the younger persons to come up to the program. So is it that um, you're not capturing them or the younger folk don't know about the program? It, it could be that, but it might be a number of things which I really won't be able to say at this time, but we do do the normal advertisement, we do do the normal word of mouth, where we try to get in contact with various community groups in the area, letting them know that the program is there and is free of cost. And then we have our community resource centers within the community, but yet still we are finding that we are having women more so than men participating in the program. Ooh. But what we found is that um, with other programs, it might be slightly different. With the computer repairs now, the men will more okay. come out than the women. Okay. But more often than not, within the Community Development Department, we are seeing more women coming to our programs. So we are trying to encourage our young men and our mature men to be part of the community programs. And these programs are free of cost and you get to learn a skill that, if you're interested, you could take it to another level where you could generate income. Okay, we fo focused a bit on the computer side of things. What other kinds of courses do we you We have the Community Impact Program. The Community Impact Program, we would say, is a skill-based income generating program where the participants will learn nail technology, mm -hmm. hair braiding, weaving, wig making, hospitality studies, and the list go on. But these programs are according to the needs of the community. For example, in the Grisettes area, you will find that the persons might be more interested in nail technology. But when you go to the, the St. Mark's Resort Center, you will find up there is doing hospitality studies. Okay. So some things is according to the needs of the community, what the community want at that particular time, that the community development officer and the center officer would would implement the program. Well, I noticed a very interesting link between what you were saying about attracting mainly females and the list of courses that you just <laughs> offered. 
It sounds like a lot of the courses would attract females rather than males. Are there any other courses that you'd say would be more male we oriented? Have, uh, I forget to mention barbering because we do have barber. I don't know. Some things it might have to do with the administrative side of things because sometimes, although you might say the course might be implemented in two weeks due to getting the approval and such, like it might take four weeks. And sometimes when you go out in the community and you're asking the persons um, what you're interested in, you find that the women are more sure of what they want okay. than our men. Okay. So it is a number of factors. So we at the department are looking at those to see how we could get our men involved in the educational component of their empowering themselves mm -hmm. and also hoping that they could generate some income as time goes on. How about career changes? Um, there's some people who go through life, they've done X, Y, Z, and all of a sudden, I've always wanted to be a nail tech, or I want, always wanted to do hair. Do you find there are people who kind of go through a career change? Yes, that is true. For, for example, we had a nail class at Grisette's Resort Center, and this young lady was saying that she was driving taxi. I think then she was employed in the hotel sector, and she realized that she wanted to do nail technology. So she came on the course hoping to improve her skills so that she could generate a little side income to help for her everyday living. So we find that we have a number of those persons who will change or who might be retired or who might be laid off and they need something to do. Wow. Uh -huh. And it's not only that we offer the program, but the end result is that we try to generate income. For example, we went to the National Council Foundation Spike Stone Market and Pan Around the Town where we had a beauty center at the Spike Stone Resort Center. So persons could have come to the Spike Stone Resort Center mm -hmm. to get their nails done, get eyebrows, get their eyebrows fitted, and that w and manicures and pedicures. So this was all and free yes. of cost? Was, no, was no, this like a nominal students? fee, a nominal okay, fee. Okay, so this was students of the program? Students of the program. Also so just doing some practical mm -hmm. skills. Okay, I got it. Uh, and the, 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 the fee was nominal, $35 from 30 to $10. Okay. Uh -huh. So it wasn't bad. So you could have come and had a, a manicure or pedicure, which would normally cost 60 to $80, being done for about $35 or so. All right, Jackie, you have a lot to say, and we want to hear what you have to say. We'll be right back on Breakfast in Barbados. Breakfast in Barbados. Make it great, make it fun, sweet. Take a moment to L and Veer with your options of Yago, fruits, and 0% fat yogurts made from real milk using real fruits. Distributed by Supreme Distributors. Breakfast in Barbados. We're back. Breakfast in Barbados. And with me is Jackie Pinder from the Community Development Department. We're going to be talking about Community Dance Fest, but we want to get to know Jackie a bit more. Jackie, exactly what do you do? I am the Community Development Officer at the Community Development Department. And what I, areas? What areas? Because we as, know. Right. As the Community Development Officer, you're assigned various areas. For example, my area is St. Thomas. St. Peter and part of St. Michael. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And within those areas, we, we don't have any community center as yet within the St. Thomas area, but we have about three community, three community slash resource centers mm -hmm. in the St. Peter area, 
that is Black Bass, Spice Town Resort Center, and then we have the Boscobel Community Center. And then you go to the St. Michael's area where I am in charge of the Grisettes Resort Center, Eden Lodge Community Center, and Jackson Community Center. That sounds like a lot of area to cover, especially yes, St. Michael, is. where you have that densely populated areas, both, all three of those areas actually that you mentioned, the last Correct. three, densely populated. Okay, let's go on to the next project that you guys work on and mm -hmm. have going on. That is the, the HIV AIDS program. This is another program that has been mandated by the government of Barbados. I can't remember the exact date that this program was established, mm -hmm. but I know that we have over say, 16 to 17 HIV AIDS education committees throughout the island. And these committees are run by the community members. Because we are seeing the community members understand the needs of the community, okay. understand the issues that within the community, and they are better able to tailor programs to suit the needs of the community. So we at the Community Development Department will offer our, our technical assistance along with the financial assistance in sort of planning and implementing the program, but it's the people at the community who will spearhead the ver various programs. For example, we might do condom education, mm -hmm. then we might have a community day. So we're not just saying because it's an HIV AIDS program, we're pushing HIV AIDS at you, but we're doing it in a roundabout way. In that, you get to learn other things that would impact on the HIV component of the HIV. For example, we might have a children's program because okay. we want the children to learn about morals, values, and how to relate to each other. Okay. So therefore, we might have it under the HIV AIDS umbrella, but we are going to do a cultural program. Mm -hmm. And I will mention Grisettes because Grisettes is my home base. Mm -hmm. And for example, at Grisettes, what we did, we did a camp. And that right. camp will have include culture, arts and crafts, moral education, and, and such like. We're saying that you need to understand who you are, you need to, got man you need to have manners, self-respect, and you need how to relate to each other so that when you, when you get to a certain age, you will know, well, there are certain things I should or I should not do. Okay. You will have an understanding of who you are. And maybe you have the necessary confidence to say no to cer certain things. Okay. So that's what the whole aim of the HIV AIDS program is about. Do you find though that, I mean it's great that the government is involved in, in these types of programs, but do you find we are shifting away from those kinds of things being taught at home? Therefore, the government has to deal more with it. I wouldn't say that. I say that the government is an added plus. Our programs are a plus to what is being taught at home. Mm -hmm. Because remember the saying, um, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So we are helping the parents in the home. And then when you come out, you understand that you need to practice. Practice make perfect. Because if you don't practice, you will never get the chance to understand what to do. So we're telling you that when you come here, these are certain things that, there's certain life skills that you must have in order to go places. For example, we at the community development partner and at home too will tell you what you need to have manners when you say people say good morning, excuse me please. So when you go to a workplace, nobody will have to tell you, well you need to say good morning. You will know those are things that are ingrained within mm -hmm. you, so therefore you will be doing them. Mm -hmm. And that is what it's all about. We are here to assist with the process. Does the department actually help out those who are directly affected with HIV AIDS? Um, we will challenge you in that direction. Okay. We don't necessarily help you as such. For example, we will challenge you to the, we will tell you about the HIV AIDS food bank and there may be other places that we could tell you where to go to get assistance. But our thing is more about community education. It's like giving people the necessary information more about changing behaviors but we, we have to understand that a behavior does not change overnight is a process for, so for example that's how we will link now our community impact program our community technology program in the sense of telling you that behavior change mm -hmm could happen and we're going to give you the necessary skills, we're going to empower you, we're going to enable you to get you to think differently and to change maybe some negative negative practices that you might have. For example, I might be a mother having three children. There's nobody, I'm not working, there's nobody to support me, what do I do? I might be engaging in behavior that might be detrimental to my health. There comes the community development department 
offering a skill-based program at the community center for that example. Can help you get out of that yes. negative behavior. Yes, but instead of just giving you the skill, we, we offer you an opportunity that you could generate income. We are also saying to you that we have the community center. You may be able to come to the community center for three days from about 9 to 12 and let your clients come that you could generate a little income. Okay. So that's the basis of it too. Is we have a center there and the center is for everybody to use. So we're encouraging the public to come out to use the community centers. Because within those community centers, we also have the internet. And persons, for example, you may not have the the printer at home you could right. come to the center and say well i need to have my school based project printed i can need anybody to do come like yes. if i needed something yes you okay. could come yes <laughs> we're encouraging you to I come i don't have a printer so. <laughs> but not to deviate from the hmv right. program mm -hmm. cause all that is all the of that is interrelated mm -hmm. so just showing you how our programs are it's a holistic program uh -huh. basically they're You're interrelated part of your the mm -hmm. community life Mm -hmm. okay. And the community is at the forefront of encouraging people within their communities to do things differently. Right. Positive behaviors, that's what it's all about. What is Community Dance Fest? Community Dance Fest is a dance program. The aim is to encourage people using dance as a process of empowerment so that when you come to the program, you learn something else. You're not just coming for dance, but you're coming to fine tune your skills, learn mm -hmm. the fundamental techniques of dance. Because remember I said, a lot of them will be self-taught. Right. So this program is in helping you in terms of life skills. Mm -hmm. In terms of, like for example, if you go to interview, what you should and should not do. All of that is a part of community uh, we, dance. Yes, that's what I'm we're thinking trying. just dance focus. No, that's what we're trying to, remember as a dancer, I might want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And therefore, how do I go about doing that? For example, this year, what we're trying to do is that at the end of the dance program, well, you won't be seeing what I just went to dance yesterday, nothing. We are hoping that at the end of the dance program, we have an understanding of what the participants want. This, is, this also is tied into our application form where you complete. And it will say, for example, um, you might say you might be interested in the youth development program. Mm -hmm. We will try to challenge you in that direction. Okay. So that is for persons who, for example, you might not be doing nothing after the program. You're not so sure you want, but at least that is something to keep you or Something else mind. that you can keep mm -hmm. going until going. you find work or, or something like that. Correct. Okay, so who's eligible for community dance? Um, the age range is, we have three groups, two, no, two categories, juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. And the youngest, I think we have five plus, and the oldest is about 16 plus, 30, 35. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. So, and then the, we, a group is two, the small group is two to three persons, and the big group is about 20 plus. We, we're going to have the registration process that will be from September the 1st to the 30th. Mm -hmm. So when we say registration, it's like we're trying to encourage all genres of dance to participate. And you would have seen that at our launch where we had the Latin, the ballroom, the salsa, and such like, and the liturgical. So we're appealing to the various dance groups out there that this competition is for you. All genres of dance are invited to participate. Mm -hmm. And we would have sent letters of invitation to all genres of dance to the schools to the churches to the established dance group asking you to participate in community dance as this being our 10th year wow. so we want to see the various genres of dance competing in this dance festival. So how is the competition broke down? Is it like on a weekly basis? Once you, the registration uh, process is over. Then the we go to the so. auditions. Oh. And the auditions will be in a community This sounds centers. very fancy, auditions and, and stuff. Yes, wow. yes. So the auditions will be in community center. And we were trying to have a say the auditions will be at say about four community centers. Because what the program is that we have broken down the program into four zones. Mm -hmm. The St. Michael's, the South and the North zone, and the Christchurch zone. <laughs> That right. just shows you the, the, <laughs> right. the amount it, that comes from St. Michael and Christchurch, that they have their own zone. Wow. Right, so we, it has been broken down into zones. We we're hoping to have the preliminaries at a set location. Right. Last year, we had the preliminaries in the community. But what we want to do is we want to flame the process. So we are hoping that we can have it at one or two schools in that they have the stage and everything ready so that we can flame the, the preliminaries. Okay. And then after the preliminaries, we go on to the zone finals. And right, the zone so finals. The zone finals now that you, you break it down to the four zones mm -hmm. and you pick the best. Correct. Zones, right. A certain set, I think it's about 20 or so. Mm -hmm. But then it has to do with the number of 
applicants mm -hmm. that we get at the registration process. And then we move on mm -hmm. to so the right zone right. finals zone finals which will be like the semi-finals mm -hmm. okay and, all right, and then and the winners of those the top the best in the zone finals then go you go on to the, the grand finals which will be january the 21st 2016 at the garfrey sobers complex but let me say within the zone finals those who reach in the grand finals you'll be given a stipend of about 500 dollars to assist you with the costume and such okay. like and That's throughout good. this process, we will be having coaches attached to each group, mm -hmm. help assisting you and fine tuning your movements and such like. January the 21st, that date was very specifically chosen? Yes, that was chosen, I think, in the first year of the program. That's Earl Bell Day. day yes. Oh, right. uh -huh. So that was chosen as the day for dance fest. Okay. Last year we would have moved it, but then they saying that we need to put it back on the, this uh, due to the significance of that day. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sounds really good. Now, if anyone is interested, they're watching and they're interested, how do they get in contact? How do they apply? Oh, and I forgot to say that we are now on social media. You could go on our Facebook page or our website and you could see the registration form and the rules. Okay. And you could also get a chance to see some of the, the winners and the past groups over the years and such like, and some pictures of the launch too. Okay. So you get a chance to see what is happening in terms of that's so best through the years and for this year. Who are some of the, because putting this together, you must have some very well-known dancers and choreographers in Barbados helping you out. Um, the, the administrative aspect is like, with, is I in terms of the department's end, and we have a number of officers within the department who would assist, like Lana Phillips Elliott, Angel Martindale, Michelle Walker Nurse, Yolansky, and the list goes on. But I would just want to say thank everybody at the Community Development Department for assisting in ensuring that we have Community Dance Fest 2015-2016. But I cannot forget also our resor other resources. Mm -hmm. There are the National Coordinator, Dr. John Hunt, and everybody would know oh, him yes. from the National Cultural Foundation. And then we have as, as our chief coach, Alicia Hurley. And she is a dancer in itself. I think a lot of people would know about mm -hmm. Alicia. Those are the two persons who would be, in essence, looking at the technical aspect of the program, ensuring that the coaches do what they're supposed to do and the judges do what they're supposed to do as it relates to the dancing and such like. I, on the other hand, would just be the administrator. <laughs> <laughs> and then you we said would early that you don't dance, right? <laughs> right, good. And then we would employ a number of coaches. Mm -hmm. For example, I know over the years we had Jennifer Seeley. I can't remember all the names, but we had some persons in the community who know about dance and who have their various dance groups. And that is what we'll be doing this year again. We're probably sending out a call, letting persons know that we're interested in, the, in getting, selecting persons to be judges and coaches. Okay. So we're looking to improve in terms of the, the, the skill sets that we have for the program. And so just keep making it better, mm -hmm, year better year as year. it goes and along. Congratulations on your 10th year running, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it will be bigger and better. So thank you very much, Jackie. But we're not going yet. <laughs> Chef Tosh is going to come, and we're going to do some sampling. Yes, breakfast will be served. We'll be right back on Breakfast in Barbados. All right. Breakfast in Barbados. Make it great, make it fun, sweet. spices have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets, MIS spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder, basil leaves, celery salt and blackened spice. 
celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products, making it special for you, for you, for you, for you. Breakfast in Barbados. We're back and it's time to sample what Chef Tosh has done for us. Tell us what you've done today. Right, today is an open fish sandwich done with Brunswick uh, sardines in the mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. But this is a cheese egg yolk um, covering I have here. Okay. So it's cheese, egg yolk, um, tomato, onion, all the um, herbs you can have there. And it's uh, lightly spiced so y'all guys could taste it. And then also I have an aioli here made from Swiss products. Uh, we have the Swiss um, ketchup and the Swiss um, mayonnaise mm -hmm. together with that. And it, it was made just with a little bit of lime to counteract the rawness that you might encounter with the sardine, but you shouldn't. Okay. Come on, Jackie. <laughs> We're going to use our fingers this morning, all right? And the verdict is... Mmm. It's good. I'm impressed with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. can't eating sardines. I cannot believe I'm eating sardines. Cannot believe I'm eating sardines. That was good. We're back on Breakfast in Barbados with mixologist Damien Williams, and he's going to put together a fabulous <laughs> breakfast shake for Jackie and I. All right, Damien, what are you going to do today? Yes, actually. I'm going to use the Dimes Pomegranate. I've used it earlier this season, for the crop over season that is, and I know it makes very well with rum. But today I'm going to combine it with a few fruits and uh, vegetables that I like, especially, you know, the bell pepper, the red one, you know, is uh, carotenoids, it boosts your immune system, mm -hmm. as well as strawberries, the same thing. And of course, uh, Ellen Vir, you know, probiotics, which is the good bacteria that destroys the bad bacteria in your intestines. And a mix juice, a mix fruit, dimes, uh, fruit juice. I'm going to try this. I never used it before, but I mean, it's going to give me the same type of effect, I'm sure. So without <laughs> any further ado, let me get straight to it. Dimes pomegranate. I'm going to use about three ounces, two ounces of the mixed fruit. So I'm going to just use my Ellen Ver yogurt. So you don't need to use a lot of the, no. the bell pepper? No, no. It has a distinct flavor and I just want to get um, the juices out when it's blended. And I'm actually going to strain it okay. after. A little simple syrup for those who want it a little sweet. You don't have to use simple syrup because the strawberries and the berries have a little sugar, not mm -hmm. too much, but it's according to your palate, whether you choose to or not. Is this something you would try? A shake in the morning or you're more like a, I don't know, a sandwich for breakfast, eggs for breakfast type <laughs> person? A shake in the morning, yeah. Yeah, this will definitely place the eggs and bacon and all that stuff, the healthier side. I mean, despite, I do use eggs every morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need protein. So how many strawberries are you gonna use? I'm just gonna use three whole strawberries. Okay. That looks wow. just about right. And you're right, the color has totally changed. Yep. So it's a nice, a little girly color, nice and pinky. Who's gonna go first? Go on, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Guess first. There you go, you can hold this. Mm -hmm. There you go. And mine, I'm really fussy about my personalized mason jar. I feel so bad now that I only brought three. I don't have one of my own. There you go. Thank you. I haven't really given it a name, but I guess you can call it the Santosha Berry <laughs> Breakfast. How Santosha Berry Breakfast? Okay. Yeah. 
Are Tell you ready, ladies. Jackie? Yeah. Oh my goodness. How, how That's good? really good. Yeah. You're not that just saying really that, good. right? No. Yeah. I would never. Thank you. It's good. It's something you would use every morning? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. perfect, perfect. This is my kind of thing. And it has a little flap in terms of the flapper. There you go. Just a slight hint of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, dimes and El and Vera. Perfect combination. Well, thank you very much, Damien. <clears throat> and that's it for Breakfast in Barbados. Cheers. Morning's here.